Korea glorified by s e n g u n Korea is advancing under the s e n g u n b a s e d guidance of leader Kim Jong-il, who is brilliantly carrying forward President Kim Il-sung's cause of s e n g u n Korean servicemen and civilians visit the statues of President Kim Il-sung across the country, looking back upon the days when he started his Seungun-based leadership. President Kim Il-sung advanced the s e n g u n idea in the 1930s and organized the Korean People's Revolutionary Army fighting against Japanese imperialism. Under his leadership, the Korean People's Revolutionary Army fought bravely against Japanese imperialism. At last, Japan surrendered on August 15, 1945. The Korean people enthusiastically welcomed President Kim Il-sung, who liberated the country. This is a memorial mural portraying him on that day. The Korean people erected the Arch of Triumph to immortalize the exploits of the present who triumphantly returned to Pyongyang after liberation. Nobody predicted bisection of Korea, but President Kim Il-sung analyzed the prevailing situation with his clairvoyant wisdom and paid prime attention to military affairs. On September 8, 1945, the United States occupied the half of Korea. Faced with a crisis of national division, President Kim Il-sung dispatched his officials seasoned in the fight against Japanese imperialism to strengthen the army.
He laid firm foundations of an independent defense industry and test fired a machine gun manufactured by the Korean working class for the first time. He built up the three services ideologically and technically. The military parade on February the 8th, 1948 was a significant event that powerfully demonstrated the might of the Korean People's Army. As the army grew stronger, the people felt worthwhile in their life. The land was distributed to peasants to meet their lifelong desire. Blast furnaces, broken down by the Japanese imperialists while running away, were restored. The children attended the schools built by the state. With patriotic mind, the workers repaired engines. The illiterates learned how to write and read at schools for adults. The ordinary people took part in elections of deputies to power organs. On September the 9th, 1948, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was founded. The United States, which occupied South Korea under the cloak of Liberator, expedited aggressive war preparations from the first day. June the 25th, 1950, the United States triggered off a war in Korea. President Kim Il-sung, in his radio address, ordered the People's Army to immediately go over to counterattack. The Korean People's Army launched counter-attack and liberated Seoul three days after the war broke out. The South Korean people enthusiastically welcomed the People's Army. Remembering the days war veterans say, Remembering the 
After liberating Seoul, the Korean People's Army completely encircled Taizan and annihilated the U.S. 24th Infantry Division, which had been advertised as an invincible division. One month and a half after the start of war, almost all parts of South Korea were liberated. It was a victory of the leadership of President Kim Il-sung, who built the regular armed forces before anything else after liberation. In the three-year-long war, the Korean People's Army dealt a crushing blow to the U.S. imperialist aggressors. The progressive people of the world warmly congratulated the Korean People's Army on its victory. On July the 27th, 1953, Korea defeated the U.S. imperialists, who had been proud of being the strongest in the world, and won the war. Though the country was reduced to the debris, the Korean people turned out in the post-war reconstruction with a spirit with which they had fought the U.S. imperialists. The U.S. imperialists prattled that Korea would not be able to get back to her feet in a hundred years. But Korea built numerous structures with self-confidence. Do you ride Tulima? The question was kindly exchanged among the Korean people who were working miracles in socialist construction. Tulima is a winged horse in a Korean legend. Self-reliance is a characteristic of the Korean working class. Korea calls the source of the successes achieved in a short span of time after the war the spirit of Chulima. The spirit of Chulima was displayed among the peasants too. They filled up the craters made by American bombs and tilled the land. They reaped the bumper crops there. The welfare of the people was guaranteed by the self-reliant defense power. The socialist construction in Korea proceeded in an anti-imperialist warfare without gun report. Instead of learning lessons from its defeat in the 1950s, the United States brought many nuclear weapons into South Korea in an attempt to ignite another war in the 1960s. Such being the circumstances, on August 25, 1960, leader Kim Jong-il, chairman of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea, started his Seonggun revolutionary leadership from
Promise inspection of the 105th Tank Division of the Korean People's Army. He declared, I advocate military affairs first politics. I will oppose the reckless sword wielding of the imperialists and reactionaries with arms to the end. The men of the People's Army further expedited military training with determinations to defend the country. When the United States provoked the Caribbean crisis and the Bakbo Gulf incident, kicking up war rackets in many places of the world, Korea more vigorously built up its economy and defenses in parallel. The Korean people are filled with determinations that if the United States unites an aggressive war, all of them take weapons to defend the country. The U.S. armed spy ship Pueblo is today used as an anti-U.S. education site on the Taedong River in Pyongyang. The ship was captured by the Navy of the Korean People's Army while intruding into the territorial waters of Korea on January 23, 1968. At this, the United States threatened a military retaliation. President Kim Il-sung and leader Kim Jong-il declared in a determined manner that the Korean army and people would retaliate for retaliation and return all-out war for all-out war. Eventually, the United States wrote a letter of apology. The scene was reminiscent of Panmunjom during the Korean War in the 1950s, where the United States held up a white flag and signed the Armistice Agreement. The U.S. administration put a signature on a document that it firmly assures the Democratic People's Republic of Korea that no ship would invade its territorial waters in the future. The crew of the Pueblo were expelled as losers. Kim Jong-il raised his Sungun politics in the late 1960s. Under the Sungun politics, Korea brought about incessant miracles and innovations in all the sectors of economic construction in the 1970s and 80s.
in an attempt to destroy Korean socialism. The United States committed military threat and espionages without let-up, only to suffer disgraceful defeat. Children are growing in happy cradles, safeguarded by Sungun. Sungun politics demands the people's army play a leading role not only in national defense, but in socialist construction. The West Sea Barrage, a pride of Korea, was built by soldiers. Under the Songun based leadership, successes were registered in literature and art. An official who assisted leader Kim Jong il in the 1970s says. From the mid 1960s to the early 1970s, we, officials, creators, and artists in the field of literature and art, thought that the respected general was directing literature and art alone. One day, when the creation of the revolutionary opera, The Flower Girl, was in full swing, the respected general arrived at the theater late at night. That day, he gave on-site guidance at People's Army units and took important measures to further strengthen anti-aircraft defenses and came to the theater directly from there. In that period, respected General Kim Jong-il gave guidance not only to literature and art, but political, military, economic and all other affairs of the country. Leader Kim Jong-il saw to it that there were created many works reflecting the armed struggle against the Japanese imperialists to educate the people in the idea of attaching great importance to arms. In July 1989, Pyongyang sponsored the Grand 13th World Festival of Youth and Students. The festival demonstrated the world, the unity and organization of socialist Korea, and its Juche character and national character. It gave a strong impression of Songun Korea on the friends from the five continents. Places of Korea 
are associated with the painstaking efforts made by President Kim Il-sung and leader Kim Jong-il to strengthen the military power of the country. Leader Kim Jong-il is the supreme commander of the Korean People's Army and the chairman of the National Defense Commission of the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. The Korean Army and People's Pledge to hold Leader Kim Jong-il in high esteem is shaking the sky and the earth. This is the Kumsusan Memorial Palace where President Kim Il sung is laid in state. Men of the People's Army pledged to firmly defend Korea guided by leader Kim Jong-il as instructed by Generalissimo President Kim Il-sung. Korea spent 1994, the year of demise of President Kim Il-sung, in bitter tears. On the first morning of New Year 1995, leader Kim Jong-il visited a People's Army unit first, saying that only by strengthening the army would Korea be able to defend the country from the imperialist moves to isolate and stifle it. Leader Kim Jong-il stated that he would advocate sung politics to the end. Seungun was the truth that President Kim Il-sung was convinced in the days of staging armed struggle against the Japanese imperialists after leaving his home village Mangyongde in his teens, and in the days of building socialism in the confrontation with the United States for half a century. <laughs> <laughs> 